Hey, before we get started on our next art lesson here, I just want to wish everybody a happy holidays and hope everybody is safe and sound and gets to enjoy themselves with uh, their friends and families in whatever fashion they see fit. So uh, with that, let's get on to our next one. We, The last one I did was feet, and obviously the feet need to be connected to legs. So today's will basically be muscle legs. Um, and again, as I mentioned on the last one, our new YouTube channel is now McFarland Company, not just McFarland Companies. For some reason, they shut that other one down. So here's the one you're looking for, and it will have all of our new ones up there, and we'll we'll get to it. So, all right, let's talk about legs uh, again. I think I've talked about arms and bodies, and again, you're going to start to hear repetition because there actually is. Uh, some things that sort of matter, but l let's talk about a leg here. So this will actually be now a left leg. Um, and again, it matters because, again, it depends on where we sort of lay in all the muscles here. So l l let's just sort of quickly start with a kneecap. I, I like to sort of do it at uh, what I call a teardrop. And if you start with a teardrop, then you can sort of get the places you want to. So here's here's going to be your, your kneecap. There's actually sort of a second bone underneath here, so you can do sort of a, a shadow of, an, of a kneecap. And now what happens is we're get, there's going to be sort of three big primary muscles. There's a one that goes right in the middle of your leg here. And again, it's just this is now a reverse teardrop. And then what happens is you're going to have another muscle that's going to come in here. And this is also going to be a teardrop in here. And then you're going to have your outside muscle. Because again, this, like I said, this is going to be your left leg. And then that teardrop is going to come up in here. And then you're going to have now where your hamstring would be. And that, again, is another sort of reverse one up in here. As you continue to go down now into the shin, same thing. Here's going to be your calf. This is going to come up in here. And then we'll get down in here. And the only reason I'm talking about teardrops right now is because what, what I want you to understand is that all these lines... If I let me choose another color here now. All these lines sort of connect here. And and it's one of the things that once you once you sort of get that, you know, the kneecap sort of bumps up against this muscle and then this one sort of bumps up into this muscle and then the top of this muscle goes into the big muscle up in here. And even this muscle in here extends into your calf muscle. Once you sort of get a feel that all these things are interconnected somehow you can get to your drawings very quickly. And so if I take this and I bring this way, way down, and I go back here and I bring this one way, way down, then what you're going to see now as I come back in there, since I know that there's a bunch of muscles here, I'm now only going to take uh, sort of the important ones. So let's just look at it. Let's just look at a, a couple of, of how we get there. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do the inside muscle. Here's what's important about the inside muscle given that you've got a kneecap that's in here. The inside muscle, this one right here, is always lower than the outside muscle. So it, you, have to, you have to pay attention to that. And if you don't believe me, then just look at your own leg in a mirror someday, and you're going to see that. And the reason that that matters is that means that the beef of your muscle will be here and on, on the inside, and the beef of your muscle will be here on the outside. And notice that there's a difference in the height of this and this right here. And because if you if you don't do that, then what happens is your legs look like this and they both end up at the same spot. You put a kneecap in there and then you come in with your calf and, and it looks wrong. It look it looks almost like a, an hourglass instead of it being, you know, the way that it should be, which is inside a little bit lower. You come into here into your groin. The groin comes up up into here. You then have this right here, and then you come in and you give me your big muscle up in here. And again, you're just gonna you're just gonna take a couple of these um, lines, and you're gonna just make them as as sort of simple as possible, so that when you're you've got your underdrawing in here, you're gonna get into the flow of having a leg that will go there. The other thing that you want to make sure is that in its simplest form, when you're drawing a leg. Think of the inside as being sort of a straight line, and then the outside sort of goes like this. 
it's not quite true, but it, but again, it'll get you there a lot quicker. So again, if here's your groin, here's your you know Superman, and here's his belt right in here. You know, you come in here with a lazy sort of M, and then you come in straight on the inside, straight on the inside, a lo little bit lazy M on the outside, and and that'll get you that'll get you some muscle structures. You can see here, I can build this up fairly quickly. Throw a couple lines in here, and I can actually get to kind of a reasonable looking leg fairly quickly as I then beef up into here and now start going into the torso up in here. So again, uh, uh, like I said, think about those lines as they become sort of sort of nice teardrops on you. And then and then again as we extend the leg into the groin area, so let's click all of these off here. Let's go up in here. Now what you want to do is you want to extend that into the groin area. So again, if if here's my groin, and then here's my love handles here. Now I've got it, I, ha I have to stick legs on it. And so the way to stick the legs on it again is to just keep these lines sort of running into each other. So here's the groin, but also that line that line can come up in here. Boom. You've got your big tear muscle in here. This one comes up in here. You do your tear muscle for your kneecap. You come up inside here to where your calf's going to be at. And then you come up in here. And again, you can you can just get there quickly. So so the m the muscle that comes down on the groin up in here, and again, here, here's sort of my my abdomen muscles up in here. You can take this line here and either carry this all the way into the groin or you can take this line here and take it all the way and track it all the way down the leg right here. So once you start finding those tracks of those lines, it starts to become easy to put, I think, the bodies together. And again, I've talked about people who do cone drawing and people who do rope drawing. I'm, I'm a rope drawer and the reason I do that is because I believe that all of these muscles, which is true, are all interconnected in the body if I was to cut them all open. And that so all I need to be able to do now is to just find a couple of key lines that I can put in here so that when I'm drawing the leg, I can make it sort of as believable as possible. And you can get there, I mean, really that quickly so that you believe it. Now the only question is once you start to figure out how to do legs in and of themselves, how do you connect feet to it? So if we click this one off, get another page here. Let's say we're coming down into, here's the calf, and here's the end of our leg here. Well now now what we need to do is get a foot on there. And again, I, I did it on a, s a second, uh, a lesson uh, a few weeks ago. But make sure that what you do is you, you make sure that you know that you've got ankles. And again, make sure the ankles aren't exactly in line. Make one just a little bit higher than the other. And when you're doing your foot that's up in here, make sure that it's sort of a little bit on the outside. Right here. You don't want to you don't want to draw everything in a straight line because it looks too rigid. So if you can see here, and if we take another color, you know, I have sort of a bit of a curve in in the shin and then it sort of goes here and then an and then the ankle is here. Why? Because the foot is actually giving support. So it looks like you're bearing weight if you give just a little bit of a tilt to the foot here as you go back up. So now, you know, it it becomes very easy now for me to look at this one and either put a boot in here you know, put a couple of lines up in here, put a couple of lines up in here, and all of a sudden you've got, you know, fairly quickly a Superman boot. Uh, let me see if I can get a white in here to get some of the lines in here that I don't want. Yeah. All right. So, so we've got a we've got a pretty decent Superman, Superman boot here. Get rid of that. And you come in here, just make sure you give a little bit of a highlight there and a highlight there. And this is where, again, once you're done with getting the basics, you can then come in with your shadows. You know, a couple of longer lines up in here. You can give a little more emphasis up in here. 
and you can get to where you want to. So uh, again, if we want to do this with a foot in mind, then uh, without a without a shoe on it, same thing. You just come up in here, and then just make sure that you've got your toe. You know, which are these sort of little squigglies. Here's your toe here. Comes up in here. You got your ankle bones up in here. Make some meaty part of your foot. And very quickly, erasing a couple of these key lines, you've got you got a foot here that's standing up there. So one's with a boot, one's with a foot, depending on what angle you've got. But there's some of the the basics of drawing a leg and connecting it to a foot. So hopefully that was helpful for you, and uh, I look forward to doing some more after the new year. And uh, eventually we'll have the whole body, and then we'll go into monsters and do some other cool stuff. Thanks. I don't know if I turn this off here.